Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Today I'm going to be talking about John Wick 4, or Chapter 4. I'm going to try to explain why I don't know if this is a good movie, I don't know if it's bad, and why I think people will like it, but I am fucking frustrated. <laughs> I guess that's where we start. First off, check myself, uh, during this whole thing, I'm not in a good frame of mind, I, um, a friend I love dearly is mad at me, you know, and as much as I try to be introspective and find out what an asshat I am, I still have to, you know, do things and get things situated and get my podcast going or whatever, so, I try to be honest on my mindset going into things, and give it an idea of, you know, where my mindset is, so that might impact this in some way. But this is a a movie action-packed craziness. And I got a feeling people are going to like it. However, I've done podcasts on the John Wick series before. And I love John Wick 1. I could watch it a million times. There's nothing I don't even not like about it. Like, I can't even do my nitpick bullshit. Love it. However, John Wick 2 and 3, to me, were a trailer for this movie, the fourth chapter. Now, in talking about those movies or whatever, in a sense of pacing, action... That's not my real concern in these, and it's not what's grating on my nerves and really fucking aggravating me. In the first one, there's no set boundaries to exactly the laws of physics, but they play with it enough, make it believable enough, do fucking hard-ass training to get these scenes done, I have no doubt. I have no doubt that these people put love into this movie in heaps. Blood, sweat, and tears, the whole deal. I bet you there's love behind the scenes, and these people are awesome. But, when the first movie borderlines on what is possible, what could happen, what would happen in situations, you kind of roll your eyes and you go with it, because this is just a thing. If it's a comic book adaption, whatever. But when you don't, have scenes that could be somewhat annoying in detail. How and why clothing made of Kevlar <laughs> can stop bullets. And I'll get a little more into detail, but in the first movie, I didn't feel overwhelmed by it, and I did not feel... Um, like I was being fed too much candy. It just was not ridiculous enough for me but the second and third movie it's just bothered me i get doing new things pushing the boundaries gun fights knife fights pencil fights whatever the fuck you're gonna do there's a level of believability that i personally get wrapped up in and it's like the rules of the world and once you break that it really fucks me up <laughs> and it's uh, maybe a nitpicky thing, I don't know for some, but it can really, you know, kind of drive me nuts. This movie will show, well this movie, and not the other ones to maybe not as up, but this movie went bonkers. But you're showing people in the middle of gunfire raising their collar to protect their face. <laughs> now... There are falls that are clown cartoonish because you cannot survive these things. And I'm not talking about holy shit, that was great. For instance, Rambo, like the first fucking movie, he's getting chased and he's on a cliff and he jumps off instead of getting shot and caught. And he uses the tree branches, he breaks his breaks them all on the way down, busts himself open. Bust himself, you know, he's all busted up inside, he's got a cut, he's got a stitch. 
And you're like, holy shit. Yo, this guy's a fucking maniac. And then they really know. And then you see the ingenuity and the credit, whatever. This movie is one cartoon scene above the other. And it just keeps adding on and adding on. There's a fucking scene where Keanu gets kicked off of like something. And it's comic book. It's, like I said, if if you want to, now maybe it's a scene that people would critique, fine, but in Daredevil, the TV show, he's running around with fucking stocking on his face for the whole fucking first season, and he's beating people up, he's all doing all this shit, and he's running around ski mask, kind of like a black suit, you know, uh, maybe an athletic suit of some sort, you know. You watch the show, if you're not, with pants, black shirt. And a fucking, you know, whatever. In the last episode, he gets his costume. Now, in that show, they establish a guy who makes special suits. Whether for superheroes, or kingpin, whatever. And I'm in a comic book world that is telling me this happened. And establishing what it means and what weight it carries in the show. So... He tells him, you know, it could withstand this, it could withstand that. Blah, blah, blah. This movie has like three fucking sentences. But let's say all the movies, all four movies have about three to four sentences that even touch the subject. So, these suits are not only Kevlar, stop bullets, but they absorb impact. Obviously. Now, in the Marvel superhero world, I can clearly designate that as part of someone's armor. Right? And you can put things on. So is that part of this established thing? Right? How do you get kicked down steps, keep rolling, like a fucking cartoon, get up, staggered up, oh, you're gonna get, get your second wind, get kicked down again, like a cartoon, to build tension for him getting to this spot at the end by with a time limit. And it's fucking annoyingly dumb in my... I just get fucking annoyed. And again, gun battles galore, different techniques, fine, this and that. But enough with bullets are no longer fucking... Imp You're running around, putting up your elbow and putting up your collar. Fights are getting so ridiculously dumb and repetitive. I'm so fucking frustrated from beginning to end. And this is built up from the other movies. Again, John Wick 1, love it, no problems. You see the little hints of it there, but it doesn't feel in your face overwhelming. 2 and 3 are a fucking trailer for this movie. They build up, it's just action craziness. Again, there's love in here. I think Keanu as a human being is probably one of the you know, nicest people on this planet. In and out, just amazing. This cast is fucking awesome. And I'm in this place of, this is not just because, you know, I'm in my, you know, uh, you know an argument with a friend I love or whatever. These other two movies didn't happen and build up this foundation of annoyance and what had happened when I was in bad moods and stuff. So there is that. And it could be personal. It could be just something that I'm not used to. I love the old Channel 5 Kung Fu movies, Shaw Brothers, and the Kid with the Golden Arm, Avenging Eagle, Five Deadly Venoms, so on and so forth. However, the second a gun comes out in any of those movies, I'm done. The movie could be well made, it could be Oscar nominated, but if I'm in the mood to watch one of my Kung Fu movies, guns are not in the movie. At all. Now... There could be great movies out there. You could rec you could say this is great, and maybe I watch, you know, whatever. But that aspect of me doesn't change. I'm just not going to be excited for guns in kung fu movies. But like I said, if you establish the world and what it can do, what's going on, I I get it. You know, and I can understand that. In the movie Tuxedo with Jackie Chan, they, they tell you this high-tech gimmetry shit that the suit can do. And I guess it might be outlandish and a little overboard. But this movie's supposed to be setting a tone of realistic 
assassin type stuff. And you know what? Someone could tell me it's based off a, you know, a, 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 you know, graphic novel. It is comic bookish. But even in that case, I, I, I don't feel the setup for this is proper. They have like fucking dialogue in this movie about a gun. And they talk about, and it's a fucking gun. And I'm like, you're okay, yeah, this is uh, whatever. And that at least lends some credence to the gun and, you know, why it might be special. Because he's like, oh, where the fuck did you get one of those? And swords, you know, the whole deal. And then you want to add on to this every everything you could think of in order of what would be considered protective. So, let's go with a guy in his fucking sweatshirt and pants. Well, if they're made in material, good luck killing him, right? Because you got to get him in the face. And everybody can dodge bullets. So, what about a suit? Fine. Even better. Because everything is Kevlar. Oh, that was one of the things about the introduction to his final suit, I think. And... You can use your collar to protect your face. Now, fine. I get it. But it's not established. To me, a Kevlar shirt, pants, suit set would stop you from getting bullets in your body. But you are walking around with huge bruises and welts on your body at the very least. Get hit with a paintball gun and go see what fucking happens. The impact. It is not feel... There's enough weight to any realism of what these things can do. So, let's go a step further. Let's go with a SWAT team armored face masks. Total get up. There are scenes in here that you don't understand how this is fucking possible. You're shooting people with special guns, not special guns. You're picking up fucking nunchucks and using them. You're doing sweeps and legs. Are, sorry, it's just not believable. I know how much you trained. I know how much it must have fucking been to to get this thing to look amazing. Again, I think people are going to like it, but I can't sit here and say that this hasn't been building up since the second fucking movie. How comical does it have to get? Besides characters with flavor and stuff, I, you know, I like that. I can get that. You have the fucking one of my favorite actors, this um, uh, Ian something. He's just, I love him and everything. He elevates it. He always seems like that guy who's going to, uh, Ian McShane from Deadwood. I fucking love this guy. I watch him in anything. Cast. I'm not upset with the cast. I, I fucking don't really. Okay, no, I do have a problem with nobody. I don't know why the fuck the guy is in the movie. He's just this convenience machine and again when we're talking about believability and talking about just now sweat sweatsuit suits up to armor it's all ridiculous all doesn't make sense it works for some things it doesn't work for others i'm sorry if you got a fucking suit on that could stop you from getting hurt from falling four stories and denting a van two feet in off its side, hit the ground and get up, oh, you know, and there's, you don't get the second win. There are 19 wins in this movie. You are always getting up, always doing things. People cannot be killed. It's repetitive, repetitive, repetitive. And of course, they're going to show techniques where they can find weak points and stuff, but it's never consistent. You can't have big sprawling battles with guys in suits and they're all not shot in the face immediately. Stop the juking left and right. Like it, no. Stop. Let them show the armor. Let it show that it hurts them. I think they showed maybe like shotguns will knock you down. But God forbid it, you know, fucking hurts you. And there's one scene maybe that you see the, uh, at the end. Nobody gives them like an opening. It's fucking gotten ridiculous. Again, the effort they put in, the love, the blood, sweat, and tears, the fucking court, the training they must go through is fucking, um, it has to be, it's some of the best shit ever. 
ever. And when I watch movies like The Raid and things like that, I never totally pulled out and get frustrated. You know, fast action cut scenes, hallway scenes, I, I love it all. And this tries to give you that in a assassin guns blade type way. And I bought it in the first movie. Hook, line, and sinker. There were little hints of it here and there, but it never felt like it was over right. It was like oversaturating everything. And that's, I think, the main point. So you got this guy, like I said, hierarchy of armor, like what works, what works, what doesn't. It doesn't consistent. Then you have this guy, Nobody, who is just stands out as one of the worst characters in this series that I've seen. Motivations, everything. Confrontations with the boss are just fucking dumb. And what maybe made it more dumb is he has a fucking dog. And no, the dog doesn't have a Kevlar fucking vest on or suit on. Like an army dog. No. It's a fucking dog that my aunt could probably strangle and fucking throw to the ground and kick it and beat it up. Now, I'm exaggerating, but I know for a fact I could. As believable as the attack scenes are, they're ridiculous. You remember, you are fighting people who are being shot dozens of times. Dozens of times. No blood. Nothing. And a dog's gonna maul them. You gotta give me more explanation. There's a dog in this movie, and he survives fucking... Oh my god. He survives for so long in the movie that I wanted him to die. And I love dogs. I can't fucking believe I'm saying this. But you want to keep putting this dog in these fucking positions and make me believe that this fucking shitty character with a shitty character arc has a dog. He tells it to kill, bite his, whatever, all your funny shit. And I ain't gonna believe it. This movie is filled with unkillable, unstoppable fucking monsters wearing fucking sweaters and pants, shirts, suits, and don't even bother with the guys who actually come in with SWAT armor. Because it doesn't matter when, the, when it's convenient to not matter. And yes, they will show how eventually they, you know, they, they're going to get them, they're going to kill them. But it's so repetitive. Gunshot, gunshot, move, go, 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 go back, gunshot, go, move, move. And if you're going to keep this rule right, everybody is fucking killed to make sure they're dead. And it's a point they make throughout the whole fucking movie. Uh, you know, guys, boom, no, boom, you're dead. You know, I'm not letting you get back up and fucking kill me. If I have the opportunity, I'm taking you out. Right? Fine. It is a staple of the fucking movie. But you get to the sub-villain jerk-off in the movie. And he is unkillable. He's Daffy Duck, the Roadrunner. You cannot kill him. You cannot fucking damn. This is unfucking real and I'm supposed to believe that every scene they cut away with where he's face down looking dead, that he's not getting the fucking back up. Again, big rushing goofy guy that is set up in, at the table. You know, I can get that. Got a guy flavor, it's all a setup. you know, who's going to do this? And then John Wick says, you know, I'm going to kill you. And, sorry, in... In, if you're setting the stakes like this, comic book world, graphic novel, whatever the fuck you're basing it on, you cannot have clowny shit. There's no way people in a death situation with John fucking Wick. Yes, John fucking Wick. You don't fucking throw him around. You don't grab him by the fucking tie and drag him up steps it is so fucking unbelievable there are scenes where you know you're dead you're supposed to be dead or not even him this other character stop it why so you can have a scene 18 fucking minutes long of 
momentum, chaos, beauty. I get it. Fine. It's not for me. I can't fucking do it. I can't sit through this. There's no way these movies are ever going to be in my Rolodex of go-tos. So that's another impact for me. I watch Lethal Weapon 1, I'll watch them all. Die Hard. With even the fucking shitty ones where he just calls them in. There is something to the nostalgia of it in the flavor. I want to love John Wick. I love this character, the progression. But there's so much exposition. There's so much to figure out what the fuck is going on. Everything's so super explained. Unbelievable fucking scenarios and setups and fucking villain bosses. I just don't buy it. it it's feeling like you're tricking me. This is all trickery. And I get it if I'm missing scenes that, you know, they were in a shop and people were explaining that uh, not only is it Kevlar, but it's coated with, you know, absorbing rubber, um, clear material. And when upon impact, it hardens, whatever. Because in real life, they're trying to do stuff like that. You got the dragon on. It was like the most impressive thing I've seen. And that's a huge fucking suit you have to wear. Or, you know, army gear. And it's made up of like ceramic plates inside. And it's fucking incredible. It's one of the fucking most amazing things I've ever seen. So, even now with, you know, they're coming out with invisibility cloaks. Like, you know, okay. <clears throat> I can be there. I can get there. I watched the Dungeons and Dragons movie, which I fucking ranted about. <clears throat> but now, I'm in this world. It's focused. It's tense. It's action-packed. Amazing beauty and everything. And everything is like a cartoon. And maybe that's fine for some people. Maybe it's, you are a fucking asshole, Joe, whatever. I get it. You know, this is not for you. I'm not here to say the movie sucks and just don't watch it. I don't fucking know. I don't know because I can't get into it. The character, I love the whole first movie. Everything about it. The, mis the mystery, the fucking everything. This is... Let's just throw everything. I'm not kidding you. How many times Keanu gets kicked down these fucking exorcist steps? A fucking million times. I swear. I don't know how long it went on for, but I fucking sighed. I, I was like, I slapped my leg. I was like, get the fuck out of here. Get hit by a car. Get switched into a van and just walk away because... I'm wearing Kevlar tuxedo. <laughs> I mean, I get it if it was plausible in that sense. I don't believe it. I don't believe anything. This happened to me a little bit in the Batman movie. Where I told I fucking hated that movie. Oh, God. That's like one of my highest viewed fucking uh, rant things. Stop. You got fucking Batman. Like... <laughs> You're not walking with thuds like the fucking, you know, <laughs> Robocop and the scare villains. It's so fucking stupid. Anyway, gunshots don't matter. It's inconsistent. This hurts. This doesn't hurt. You know, uh, you know, bombs can go off in my face. Literally in my face. Hey, yeah, no problem. Okay, okay. And I might be like the old A-Team show. If you watch the A-Team show now, there are scenes, even in the opening of the credits... Where you clearly see the jeep fly in the air. This is what's great about good res resolution in TVs now. So the jeep goes flying in the air, and it's clearly two dummies bouncing around with no control. It is obvious that they're just dummies. And the whole thing, but when it ends, like when you get in the show or whatever the scene, when it cuts, it's people getting out going, I'm okay, I'm okay. <laughs> and guns in the bit. I mean, you know, and at least that told you, hey, look, we're using prop guns and stuff, so we're going to make it look like we're going to shoot you. <laughs> like, okay, and even that was fucking four seasons, so whatever. This is John Wick. The assassin, killer, table, marquee, whatever the fuck is going on in this movie. Excommunicado, fine. Lawrence Fishburne, King Bowery guy, whatever. It's fucking two other movies that are just fucking bubblegum fucking nonsense of repetitive 
fucking long fight scenes. It just, it, it started out like effective ways to kill people. Oh my God, he's too close with a gun. I got a knife. You know, what are we going to do? This just feels enough. I want to scream. This is fucking ridiculous. I know you want to get good scenes of the woman fighting and Keanu fighting and get angles, but it's so fucking bullshit. Sorry, I don't care how fucking skilled you are. If you are showing me this fucking giant fucking monster in bulletproof suit, beating the shit out of fucking Keanu Reeves, massive kick, like you know, he's getting so deceptively fast. And if he gets his hand on somebody, they're dead, right? You, you know it, right? Keanu's in trouble, but smash him against the wall. But you'll do this with a female. And I'm not, look, I'm not hesitating that this female will beat the shit out of me in the street. Well, you know, I know MMA shit is real. I'm not an asshole. But no. I know what this monster can do. He's demonstrated it. Why is he going to drag you on the floor, throw you around? You know what I mean? It just doesn't make sense. Is Keanu Daffy Duck, he gets bent around a pole. And like, he's got his 14th win. He's getting up. When does it become enough? Oversaturated fucking noise. Everything becomes drowned out. I'm lost in this fucking cacophony of gunshots and blades and movements and angles of guns and shot. How are they going to get to his head? And get, you know, stop it. Make a fucking cohesive thing that has general rules that apply. Every asshat who thinks his fucking, uh, you know, sweater and pants are going to protect him in a fight should be made an example of at some point in the, in the, in the movie. The guy wearing a tuxedo should, it should be shown major things. And again, you might show me them trying to get ingenuitive to kill the guys with the mask and stuff, but it's so unbelievable. How are you going to make me see the guy shoot him five times, figure out you got to get the neck or underneath at an angle, but then make them fucking go flying or whatever when you hit him with a fucking nunchuck? Stop it. What the fuck are you doing with nunchucks hitting these motherfuckers? You shot the guy 50 fucking times. You've hit him with bazookas and fucking tanks and fucking Superman. The Hulk came down. They, like, what are you showing me when he's going to go, uh, 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 and he's getting hit with a fucking nunchuck? I don't give a fuck with the nunchucks made of titanium, fucking cap shield, Wolverine's claws, adamantium. So it's fucking hammer material. All right, well, whatever. If it's magical, okay, we'll get there. Enough. I can't fucking. It's just bullshit. And these are segmented throughout. The, I haven't even even gone through like plot. It's like I, I'm so fucking annoyed that I sat through this movie in frustration because I love the character, love everything. We got directed by Chad. What Trzynski? Yeah, you know, and uh, written by Shay Hatton and Michael Finch. We've got Keanu Reeves, Donnie. Okay, here's another part, right? So you have a fucking dog, a shitty character, nobody, and they bring Donnie Yen in the movie. Holy shit, you got me, but you lost me. You made Donnie Yen. A blind assassin. Yes. Yeah. Uh, he's a blind assassin. Fuck off. Stop it. Fucking stop it. Does he have superpowers? Are you telling me this world is filled with superpowers? Like, am I missing something? Is this based off a fucking graphic novel by Stan Lee that has been fucking unearthed? Am I missing some connection to, like, the boys where, you know, eventually, you know, you know, the assholes who hate supers, you know, have to take super... I, I don't know what the fuck is going on. Got King Kong in a suit. 
what finally kills him is a pinball fucking fall that Keanu would have laughed off. But they make sure they show that he lands directly on his head. Whatever. But no, Keanu could hit every part of his body. He could be a pinball for 15 fucking minutes running in the movie in a row. Yes, I'm exaggerating, but that's the frustration I'm having in this movie. It's hard to, like, fucking grasp. Again, yes, I, I am in a place, whatever, but this is two movies now that are really built up to this. And fuck the plot, like, you know, the other movie ends, uh, you know, Ian McShane shoots him, whatever. And of course, he's fucking alive, and now we are... In the sewers with the Bowery King stuff, Canada's training, and he's going to take out the table. Well, if you have an organization and you want to take out the, you know, the command, it's the table. Twelve heads of the Hydra, whatever the fuck, right? Kills them, and he's out. He's, you know, they'll, they'll have to read whatever the fuck his plan was, right? So, that's it. You're all dead. John Wick says so. So, he goes, you're dead, whatever, you're dead. And then it's revealed that there are the old ways. So, this plot is starting off, Keanu's going to kill them all. Every, whatever, how many there are, 12. Their command subordinates are, I think, the Maquis, and it's douchebag McFucking McGee, and fucking unkillable fucking Plato fucking guy, who is fucking seemingly dead at least five times in this fucking movie. But no, he's got to come back. You got to have this fucking guy in a movie to give his goofy fucking smile and his villainous fucking fight. Well, he's fucking great, right? Again, he beats the shit out of me 10 seconds outside. I walk outside. You know, that's not what I'm, you know, it's blending of realism and thrills and what's the stakes here? Like, you're on the floor, your your hands are up in front of you, you're about to be killed. What the fuck does it matter? Pull your collar up, asshole. Let him run out of bullets. What the fuck's the problem? You set these rules. Pull your collar up. Turtle up. Let him shoot every fucking bullet. And when he gets close to you, to put it under your belly or your fucking head from on top, you fucking... You wick him, right? No. You are either unbelievably, uncannily able to dodge bullets with your head, meaning they're going for the head, they know they're wearing suits, and it doesn't work. So we have to force close combat, combat amazing core, just some crazy shit. And it's non-stop. It just doesn't fucking end. And it keeps going. And it keeps going. And it keeps going. And this was like the fucking second and third movie. Like, you saw me scenes. Like, it felt like two hours of a scene in a club. And it was all a fight. Like, okay, and we got to this point. Like, what? Is this, like, where we're going? It's not for me. Again, Keanu's probably one of the most amazing humans on the planet. All these people are probably loved. Have great relationships, friendships. They put the fucking effort in. This is... Some crazy shit. I'm sure people are getting fucking hyped off it. It is bonkers. I mean, shit you not how fucking bonkers this movie is. <laughs> the John Wick and these people in here are like, like what they would portray ninjas as, which would be okay, in a sense. Right? Because if this was like, you know, you went that element and you put in something... Like, I'm um, a mystery of something. Like, maybe, again, maybe I missed this. Maybe I'm fucking lost from the first movie on. And it's just an element that I don't get. But, again, it's not just that. It's lots of other things. Repetitive, repetitive stuff. So, let's get back to Donnie Yen. is a blind assassin. And you forget. Because it's fucking ridiculous. You're in a John Wick movie. Fucking, you know, see what they do? It's fucking 
crazy what they do. And you have a fucking blind assassin. You know, he taps things. You know, he does that. You know, fuck off. Fuck the fuck all the way off. By the way, did this motherfucker, same actor, play a fucking fallen Jedi or uh, Jedi wannabe? And he had a fucking stick. And he fucking hit stormtroopers with it and hurt them with it. Is this the same fucking guy? Because I think it is. And he's fucking blind. You know what? He's in touch with the force. He's able to walk out in the middle of a blaze of gunfire and not get hit. To finally get to the device to turn it on because they're all going to die. And he sacrifices himself. But you know what? I can believe it. I can't believe he's beating people up with a stick, though. Which is why I fucking hated his character. You have to convince me that he's using the force behind these blows. Am I willing to give that much? No, because I didn't look believable. I don't want to see a guy with a fucking stick hitting stormtroopers in armor. Let him hit the guy eating his fucking soup outside with his fucking tunic and pants on. You know what I mean? It just doesn't feel right in any way. It's just repetitive in this blind guy dog uh, this dog gets picked up and uh, first off the kill all right, all right the unkillable guy villain who dies like five times is has a fight he fights with the dog like twice in the movie like this is fucking ridiculous why am i even like can you hear what i'm i don't even believe my, the words coming out of my e mouth right now i was gonna say ears anyway the villain dude who's unkillable, who's like fucking Taffy Man or, you know, whatever, fights the dog like three times, maybe, or a potential three times. This guy's an animal. This guy beats the shit out of every fucking body. Like, I don't think there's anybody, well, hold on. Well, there may have been a stalemate, but John Wick is getting his ass kicked. Maybe Kane, the blind guy, had some fucking success. He's a fucking animal. Fucking animal. And this fucking dog is fighting. He's fighting. Okay, so let's get to the part where it's Frogger. The streets are going crazy. No one gives a fuck about bullets going off in a club. And surely no one gives a fuck about guns going off in the middle of a highway. Because there are fucking scenes in this movie where people are bouncing around in the background, in the foreground everywhere with sick camera angles because they're chasing John Wick into traffic <laughs> and he's picking people up and throwing them into cars, he gets thrown into cars this is fucking, am I in the Matrix? Is that what this is? Is this going to be revealed that because Morpheus is in it, hey you know give me something to ground myself so it's enough to see Keanu picked up and he's thrown into a car so much it looks like the Hulk smashed into it it's fucking it's caved it's just it's just fucking silly and it happens way more than once so unkillable McKillison has got the dog okay and it's time to end this shit right now. Because you're a fucking animal. One of the top killers, d fighters in the fucking world. You're wearing the unstoppable suit, tan suit, but possibly, if I'm correct. And you look fucking amazing. You've got this fucking dog. So fucking smash him into a car, baby. Done. Nope. Dog gets up and barks at you, bitch. We're going to see each other again. This is John Wick. This is serious. This is you killed my puppy. I have a life. You don't know who you woke up. You poked the bear. Oh, my God. This fucking guy is loose. And now we're in pinball machines of fucking insanity. This is bonkers level stuff. This is fucking spoof level 
stuff for me. It just is. And it's fucking frustrating. And I've just been ranting about that. And again, it's the plot. It starts off. I'm going to kill you all. Then the plot gets cut off. And, you know, we got to figure things out. And this character's got to fucking develop. Some shitty one. Some half-interesting, you know, things that are going on. Shot well, probably. And all that stuff. But you get to the point where the old ways are a secret. And you know what? You can duel him. And get everything you wanted from every movie. What? Yeah. Huh? Yeah, exactly. It's exactly what Keanu was like saying throughout the movie. So apparently, if you have a connection to family, I don't know fucking how, and they are somehow on the table, above the table, or below the table, potentially, they can challenge... Oh, no, so they could petition a challenge for someone, and that person needs a second, whatever, to <laughs> agree and get this codified, right? So we have John Wick, three-hour fucking, what is this, three-hour movie? It feels like seven. So now he's got to go, find his family, connect, do his thing. Doesn't go well, obviously. But then, potentially can be well. But he's got to kill the killer of the woman's father, his, I don't know, fucking stepbrother's uncle's nephew, whatever, family. And that's part of the movie, you know, whatever. Like, we're talking about cutting into the plot for something that's so fucking dumb that should have been mentioned in the first movie. You didn't have a guy you found in a monastery who told you this information. Like, this wasn't a Keanu Reeves is kicking ass and killing people, and he finds, like, oh my god, I thought you were dead. And he's like, no, whatever, they, they secluded me, and I found, I read the secret tablets. No. This is, hey, Keanu, did you know, John Wick, or John Wick, that family connected somehow can petition for a challenge, and if you get a second challenge, it can't be refused? All right, let's do this. So... Challenge issued. And I don't know how much time is left in the movie, but it felt like fucking hours were left in the movie. So, even my ride through this was not satisfactory in the sense where I thought things were building. You know, the ups and downs of movies, you know, to how people plot things, and it didn't feel right for me. And, again, these are things that all end up, I'm ranting about the just cartoon shit that's going on, the physics and stuff, and characters here and there. And when you put these elements into a plot that has to now have a middle ground of, you know, John Wick, family, kill this guy. Of course, you've got fight scenes that last for hours, it seems. So you get there, and it feels like there's another two hours to this fucking movie because the next 45 minutes is John Wick walking up steps, getting kicked down the steps. And I mean steps, 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 break, you know, walking. Then he went down more steps, more steps, more steps, break. And I believe he went down more steps, more steps, more steps. Holy shit. 72nd wind. Because it's at the end of the movie. I'm not, I, I, you know, I'm exaggerating but possibly, but this is fucking bonkers. Then, I'm not done yet because fuck that shit. Get up there and get back up there. Well, unkillable McKillison kicks him again down the fucking stairs. Now, mind you, this is a time thing now. We've made the deal You've got the petitions, you've got the backers you need, the challenge has been issued, it can't be refused. Get there by 6.03, sunrise. And this whole thing, we've got Tom Clay, you got some fucking great actors in here. Awesome, you know, little elements here and there. It doesn't work on a grand level. Because, you know, um, the manager, Ian McShane and fucking Morpheus, 
can bring Neo, Neo, see? It's only so far that can they bring John Wick to the church where they're going to have the fight. So, none of these fucking assassin organizations ever think in any ways they got these rules and these rules are fucking set in stone. You fuck with these rules, you are fucked. And they make it, they make a statement to say that to who's supposed to be the main villain. Like, hey, you know, watch yourself, okay? Check yourself type thing. So you've got this time element. You've got to get there. So what happens? Of course it felt like there was two, mo two, hours, mo two hours left because it kind of was. Every fucking mercenary is connected to a radio station and they're pinpointing his location and they are fucking him up and he's killing them. And this is, I think, the frog is seen. This highway bullshit. There are people bouncing around like fucking volleyballs. Like someone threw like a dozen volleyballs into a highway. And cars were hitting them. Again, nobody gives a fuck in a club if you're shooting people and stabbing them. Pushing their faces through fucking windows. No one gives a fuck. And no one obviously gives a fuck about the cars. And there's only one scene where they had the balls... To fucking show a character come into frame and people around him were a little confused and not sure what to do. And it was a group of them. I'm guessing coming out of the club, maybe not the highway thing. I mean, what are you going to do? Dogs unkillable, bounce off fucking cars, make huge crashes in their way, dents. John Wick could be fucking smashed, pinballed, thrown down steps. And I mean throwing down steps. Rolling. Well, you can't stop your momentum. Because he's wearing a fucking suit that is giving him superpowers. It's not only protecting him from kinetic energy, right? That's any blunt force. You are being... You are rolling down the steps. How many internal injuries do you have? This is... This is impossible. And unless I'm given some structure, unless the plot is advancing in a way where I'm forgetting it, and maybe that's part of the charm of the first movie, that these elements are in there, and I'm only picking them out here because they're better editors and stuff. I, I go, I, you know what? Fine. I can see that. Right? So I don't know how much I, more I could fucking talk about this movie. John Wick 4, to me, is the second movie... In my opinion, you got John Wick 1, two trailers, and John Wick 4. Because at least this tries to get things resolved where I understand what the fuck is going on. To, to, to at least some extent. In the other movies, like, who the fuck are you in the desert? What? My finger? What's going on? Who are you? Where are we, what are we going? How, how does this work? Okay, let's do this. Let's do that. I'm in trouble. Can you help me? Whatever. And it's, you know, added to the element of these movies, and that's fine. You know, Keanu can't, you can't go, whatever, but it has to be, for me, grounded a little better. Cut these fucking action scenes down. Give me a distinct level of awareness of what you're fighting, where, when, and what you're using, where I understand how it works. No one told me that these nunchucks had technical pumps in them that when you strike somebody, it exerts the force of a fucking car going 50 miles an hour. Because if you tell me that, I'll believe it if it's in the movie. But how am I supposed to fucking get into this? He's got his gun, he's got the fucking nunchucks around his neck, so you know he's using it for a good portion of the fucking movie. And as soon as he did it, I went, for fuck's sake... You put it around your fucking neck, John. You just had to put these fucking... No, I don't know, maybe they're not nunchucks. They looked a little longer in the wood part. But of course, he's got to do all fucking tricks and techniques with it. Which he busted his ass doing, training, whatever. It just doesn't work. Doesn't work for me. Even some of the great, like... Bruce Lee movies and stuff, like they were at the stage where people might pull out guns and stuff. I wasn't a fan. But again, I'm 
Love John Wick 1. John Wick 2 and 3 are fucking just action fest of craziness. Too much for me, it's overload. I view them as trailers for this movie, which is a fucking surreal, fucking bonkers depiction of assassins. Like, how much more... You, you might as well put, like, someone with no legs, right? Someone with no arms. Like, are we going to get Kill Bill territory? Where, like, blood comes out in fountains? And, like, there are some levels where things work. I have a friend who doesn't like the way, you know, Quaker does all the blood. It's like, it, didn't, it, it, it just didn't work for him. Your people love that shit. And again, I'm sure people are going bonkers right now. Action galore. Oh my god, the things they did, the techniques, the new improvements they did. Fine, you love it. I find it aggravating. I find it almost, I dare say, insulting, but I think that's more my personal mindset right now in this place and time I'm in watching this movie. So I'm going to try to say I think people will like this movie. I don't know if it's good or bad still. Like I, I don't want I don't have that in me with this movie. I really don't have any there are a lot of movies that can feel like I'm invested in it and I wanna say my piece. Like give people the impression that hey you might like this movie and I just don't and my rant is personal nitpicking nonsense and <laughs> Maybe this is in that category. Maybe this is definitely something I might look back on. I don't think I'm watching John Wick 2, 3, or 4. Again, to me, that's not only problematic, it goes back to what I discussed earlier. I will watch all the Lethal Weapons. I will watch the Batman movies. Yeah, Batman, Batman Returns, the fucking Michael Keaton, then we went to... You know, Batman, Robin, whatever. I'll fucking watch. I watch them. I got watch them dozens of times. Can't be fucking nonsense. Give it to me. I'm ready. I'm ready to watch Adam West, 19 fucking 60s Batman. I will fucking eat up that show and love every second. Even when they tilt the camera and put the powers and zaps on it, I'm fucking there. Don't give me your unkillable dog. Taffy Man, Unkillable McKillison, Blind Fucking Assassin, City Plot Fucking Convenience, Nobody, who fucking, by the way, owns a dog. And the whole fucking thing, even at the end, is fucking annoying. People's facial expressions, the fucking... It's just fucking bullshit to me. What can I give credit to? What can I look at at this movie? Keanu's fucking great. I just love him. Ian McShane. Um, I think we also lost uh, one of the actors, right? Oh, man. I think that's uh, fucked up. Uh, I think I made a note about it. Oh, fuck. I feel bad now. No, that's not him. Oh, this sucks. I don't like having pauses, and especially I was getting ready to end it, but when I talk about someone who might have passed away in the movie, I want to take the time to look. This is fucking annoying. I don't know. I think he was the guy from Fringe. Yes! Lance Reddick? I think he passed away recently. I feel horrible talking about this. I've been making a lot of mistakes. My, Like I said, my brain's not there. I'm not, you know, not focusing in that sense. Um, so even this whole podcast, I don't know what the fuck's going on technically. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, oh, fuck. Yeah, March 17th at age 60. I love this guy, too. I love him in everything. I even think I gave this guy praise in that fucking Resident Evil abomination. I think he played, like, 
um, popular guy from the video game, right? <laughs> Whatever the fuck his name was. Holy shit, I loved him. And I guess he'll be missed. Great actor. Great presence. Lance Reddick. Elevates, again, almost everything. And to be honest, I can point that out. Like, he's, you know, I can't say how long he's in the movie for or whatever, but him, Ian McShane, solid. Um, I knew it was coming, but I thought it was executed well. The end of the movie fight scene that gets around the obvious problem. So real quick, at the end of the movie, you got to be there 603 for a, a showdown. And the way the rules worked, the major fucking villain, ass twat hat, says, okay, guns, oh, knives, and they f- turn cards off. Whoever wins gets their choice. So that's how everything is decided. But he decides to have Kane, the blind guy who is a old friend of John Wick, to be his fighter. So, of course, he's not going to do it, of course. Oh, but forget, don't forget, he has a daughter, and they're going to kill his daughter. So, it's on. John Wick has got thousands of mercenaries in between him and the place. He gets up the steps. They kick him down like fucking 77 times. He gets back up. Kane joins him, blind guy. They, you got to get up the fucking steps. He's like, yeah, okay. No, he's dead. He died in the second movie from internal fucking wounds. But he's obviously quickly regenerating. So just give him a couple fucking minutes and he'll get up. So they get up, they go up, they run up to the top. Fight, 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 fight. But guess what? This is the friend he's got to fight. So they get there just in time, right? Oh my God, sun, sunrise, beautiful sun. By the way, awesome shot, beautiful sunrise. When E. McShane mentions that to Keanu and he looks over, I felt it. There you go. I fucking like that scene. And it's part of the scene I kind of like where, here we go. So the rules are, and remember, they're set by them playing a card game, sort of, or big play, plaque fucking things. So, it's going to be a duel with pistols at 30 paces away. If you survive, you go to 10 paces. Oh, no, 20. And then to 10. And if you're not dead, something fucking is supposed to happen, right? So, it's John Wick and his friend. Bam. 30 paces, boom, boom. You got me a little, I got you a little. Heh <laughs> heh heh. The guy's blind. The guy is fucking blind. Does anybody have an idea how fast bullets go? Yes. I even know about the training that lets you recognize when people draw the gun, where they're going to shoot, and gives you like certain... But guess what? They did tests on this, and it's not as fucking beneficial as you fucking think. Because guess what? Try to catch a fucking arrow. They've done they've done things. These guys are fucking crazy. They can't. You know, you might find one outlier I missed on the internet or whatever. Oh, the dueling pistols are like old school, but they have re- modern bullets. 20 paces. Bam, bam. Holy shit. Blind guy's gonna die. He's got a belly wound. But it's a little to the right. I don't know. Grimace, let's walk a little unsteady. Keanu gets hit again. Not as major. And you know, blind guy's gotta die. He just got to. But, you know, also, he can't. Because it's obvious from the beginning, you're not killing the guy who's John Wick's friend who's making obvious things throughout the movie to, to show he really doesn't want to do this, and he's got a daughter. Guess what? Ten paces away. Bam! The guns go off. John Wick's on the ground. And fucking blind man assassin is the winner. So... Next step, he gets a bullet, and he puts it in John Wick, and that's how this movie ends. No, 
That's not what happens. Because John Wick, right before they shot each other, says the secret code words. Now, the secret code words enable the blind guy and John Wick to exude pheromones that affect the major villain in the movie. Now, if you're not, you know, looking whatever, and you're not making up a bullshit story like I am, you got to confuse when the big guy, head, well, he's not the big guy, but, you know, he's the head honcho, jerk off face, ass hat, walks over to the blind guy and takes the gun, gets the bullet pulled in, and he says, I call this, because remember, he's the one that got challenged. Now, he chose the blind guy. He's got the gun. Keanu's on his ground with his hands out. He's going to die. He's got a gun in his face. Obviously not in his face, you know, but, but the guy's standing up over him. And John Wick doesn't pull his collar over and become invulnerable because, you know, we can't do that, even though we show it 5,000 times for the movie. No, because the pheromones that made him grab the gun, put the bullet in it, step over John Wick, also makes him listen to Ian McShane say these words. He never shot his gun. You arrogant asshole. Whatever the fuck it is. What do you know? The guy is so surprised, so affected by these pheromones, that when he turns to look at John Wick with his gun, John Wick pulls out his gun and shoots him dead. From the ground, in the guy's head. I'm surprised this guy didn't have bulletproof skin. Like, I totally expected him to get up laughing his fucking ass off. Because this movie has gone bonkersville you know the blind guy, so of course, blind guy's got to live. So, the main villain, ass hat guy, is so wound up in his ego. I think he said, like, you know, a living man clings to death and a dying man clings to life or whatever. And, you know, that set the four moments off. The guy grabs the gun. Like, it's so fucking insane, but it was executed well. There you go. Sunset, the leading up scene to that, you know, a little exchange. It just shows you the ridiculousness of it, how I described it, you know, my bullshit pheromones and stuff, but it was, it was executed well, you know, and it worked, I think. I think audiences were fucking liked it. Do I recommend John Wick 4? Yes. I'm going to just say yes. I'm going to assume... My mindset, my dislike of certain things that are u maybe unique for me and maybe certain people like me. Just don't let me get invested in it like I did the first one. Now, I don't say kill a puppy, kill his puppy in every movie. But you might want to kill his puppy in every movie. I don't know. I mean, that could get tiresome. But can that be any more, less like repetitive than... Like... 80 fucking minutes of fucking non-stop different angle gun punch kick combos that just don't stop people bouncing around like pinballs dogs are invulnerable oh and the shitty character nobody who's like a great tracker he's got a backpack that at one point in the movie becomes a front vest so he can be shot and live meaning his clothes were not assassin clothes, and I got that. Like, I actually caught on to that. These are the things you want to look for in the movie, I guess. Go ahead, watch the movie. I found it frustrating. I found it a continuing mounting frustration from 2 and 3, which I believe are trailers for this movie. Love John Wick 1, love the characters, love some of the performances, but as a whole, I can't find immense excitement or joy for this series as a whole. So, there you go. Hope everybody's doing well. My best to you and yours. I'll talk to you all later. Bye-bye.